I would have taken these home and pretended they were diamonds and pretended I had treasure. I would have sold them to the neighborhood kids and made a profit. <laughs> it's clear that this test was a fling and a miss. To stand a chance of a direct hit split, they're going to need a plan B. What do you think? Should we head back to the shop and make a system for guiding the glass? Yeah, I've got some ideas. Me too. Lurking innocently in your garden shed, a lethal accident is waiting to happen. Or is it? We have been trying to determine whether a lawnmower can fling rocks with the same amount of energy as a bullet. What we'd like to do is measure the speed at which the rocks are leaving the lawnmower and then see how that compares to the speed of an actual bullet. Before comparing actual bullets, they're measuring the mower. Why am I taking the motor off? Well, for us to test it in the shop, we need to look closely at it and run it for a while. And so instead of having this noisy, smelly gasoline engine going in here, we're just going to swap it out with an electric motor, nice and clean and quiet. This thing's stuck. And we got it. Ah. The way this motor is wound, it's going to give us 100 RPM for every bolt that it sees. And so given that the gas engine ran at 3,600 RPM, we need to feed this 36 volts to see the same RPM. But the thing is, if we give it that voltage all at once, it's going to spin that blade up to full RPM in like a millisecond. It's, 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 you just built a lawnmower that I want to be behind a blast shield in order to start. And, uh... That's scary. It might end up putting the blade in the wall or in me or something, because something's going to break. So I've got to figure out a way of doing it a little more gently. To gently deliver that power, once again, Jamie uses equipment in ways for which it was never intended. This is working perfectly. He's hooked up a DC-powered <laughs> welding machine to a lawnmower. I love it when things actually work the way you hope. I mean, uh, it, it is somehow a little counterintuitive to run a motor off of a welder, but yeah. DC power is DC power. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, let's get it up on a stand. We need to be able to deliver the rock to the spinning blade in a way that we can actually see what's going on. Now it's looking like something but Adam and I have come up with a way of doing it, which involves putting the whole mower up on top of a sheet of clear acrylic, and then we can see from underneath. Yet another in a long line of pristine surfaces soon to be destroyed and sullied in our hunt for the truth. And we'll simply raise the mower, get the mower up to speed, and then lower it down onto the rock. Bang. So how are we going to keep this stuff from going all over the shop? Well, we've cut away the whole side here, so we wanted to go there. So I thought we'd put some uprights and plywood here to protect the walls. We already know that a lawnmower can hurl a rock at a fairly good speed. But we don't know what that speed is. Cool. All right. That's position one, medium-sized rock. So we're going to power up this lawnmower to its full speed. We're going to feed rocks into it, watch them on our high-speed camera, and measure exactly how fast they leave. You ready? I'm ready. Well, let's do this. 18, 25, 32, 34, speed. All right, here we go. Dropping a lawnmower onto a rock. Three, two, one. Cut it. Blink, and it's gone. Because when the mower is lowered, the blade instantly slices the stone into chunks. Oh, wow, just absolutely decimated that piece. Question is,